Welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Today, we are honored once again to be with Tim Danahy from the Tim Danahy Show of the Past, which we hope to sometime get back in La Ola. He interviewed just about every book writer that was important and more, and former director of Coffee Party USA. Tim Danahy, thank you so kindly for being on Politics Done Right once again. It's a privilege, Egberto. It's uh, one of the best uh, uh, talk shows, uh, I believe, uh, in the country. Well, you know, Tim, let me tell you, by the way, you're going in and out sometimes. I think there's squelps maybe, and so I'll let you know if, if it happens often. But anyhow, um, Tim, I, I got a text this morning from you that really, you always give me good political advice, I must say. You are I don't want to call you a moderate because I have a thing that uh, moderates really don't make a lot of difference. You do. And because your moderation comes from wanting results, unlike many who define themselves as moderate. And you said something to me that surprised me. I'll be, I'll be frank. You said, would it be effective wordplay to associate Trump with a word negative to the wingers by saying Trump has declared jihad on the U.S. Constitution? To which I said, I got to talk about this because it's not just a phrase, it's a reality. Why don't you kind of expand on that? Well, my thought on that is um, uh, what he is doing by trying to overthrow the election uh, is in violation of constitutional uh, provisions and governmental norms. But yet, if we were to use uh, those terms, I don't think it's effective for his supporters to understand. Um, the words jihad, and I also used the word fatwa, if, if you wish to elaborate on that later, but the use of the term jihad would be something like say, well, he's declaring war on the constitution, but it would have a negative uh, con connotation. Um, and and in, in fairness to the word jihad, it, it is often misused. I mean, you know, uh, jihad is actually uh, you could say that uh, I have, I could say that I have a jihad to lose weight this year. It's a personal mission, but one of the conditions is that it must be led by the person who declares it. And so um, it, it, it's accurate uh, in, in the context that we're talking about. Uh, Donald Trump has declared jihad on the U.S. Constitution. Now, it seems, um, you know, I, I think if, if you listen to most of the people on the right, they generally wrap themselves in the flag, they wrap themselves in the Constitution, they wrap themselves in life, in promoting life for all. But it seems like all that has happened thus far is anathema to that. Why don't you talk a little about uh, the, I, I don't know, we can't call it projection because what they're projecting is is diametrically opposed to what they're actually representing. Why don't you tell me your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I understand what you're saying. And, and to get to that point, perhaps we should uh, talk about a failure on the left. Um, whenever the left has a, a, a march or a protest, there are no American flags. You know, whenever there is a march, there should be American flags. This is part of the American experience. I want to stop you right there. I, I want to expand on that. Uh, I love that you said that, Tim. Uh, folks, why do you, that is very important. There's nothing wrong. It, it is actually we who are supporting the, what, the personification of what America represents. Please continue. I just wanted people to hear what you said there. Yeah, well, I, I think that's important because in, in, you see Trump hugging the flag. You see American flags, American flag jackets. I mean, it, it, it is part of uh, the rights campaigns, right or wrong. And uh, the left seems to have divorced itself from, America, from that American uh, symbolism. But, but the left is as American as the right. And we must not divorce ourselves from uh, that reality. Now, um, January 6th, the commemoration of January 6th. Um, it seems like there are two commemorations, really. One, uh, they are pretty much attempting to make it seem like January 6th was a war on uh, all that was wrong in America and people just reacting to it. 
and those of us who actually know that January 6th, in effect, now that we're learning a whole lot more of what happened from the communications between uh, uh, Hannity and the president and, and uh, uh, Peter Navarro explaining exactly what occurred, it seems like that was a real coup attempt. So um, where do we go from here? You know, there's a word that might apply that isn't used. And I think the word would be strong. Now we talk about coup attempt or overthrow. Uh, we couch it. Uh, the word really might be treason uh, because that is what it is. It, it, it's, it's an effort to overthrow the constitutional process of the United States. So let's call it treason. And, um, you know, it, we're trying to um, uh, do it in different lights, but we have to do you side uh, with the traitors or do you side with the constitution? Um, the constitution is very straightforward in what the processes are for electoral colleges. Um, that is in a democratic society, we can debate that. Made it both ways too, Egberto. Someday you and I will, um, but um, but that's part of the. But but this was a violent and coordinated, planned uh, attempt to uh, disrupt the constitutional process. Treason. It was an in essence, it would overthrow um, the Constitution of the United States. Now I'm going to tell you something shocking and something that progressives will probably uh, slice me for, right? But in this whole dilemma, as far as how we're handling January 6th, and the, 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 the nature in which, how violent it was and what it meant, means to our, to our country. I tell you, I think the strongest person, the person that has shown the most resolve on this whole issue, and people are not gonna like it, but I think it's Cheney, uh, Representative Cheney in Congress. Because in my humble opinion, she's the one that has the most to lose and irrespective of having the most to lose, uh, she is out there not, not hiding and being a soft Republican in her attack on, uh, on what occurred, but Liz Cheney is out there putting her neck on the block. I have nothing in common with Liz Cheney at all, no, no, none of her values with respect to what I believe in social programs, with what I believe in, in many other issues align with hers. But as far as being an American, as far as supporting this country, as far as making note what this country represents, I think she has shown more pelotas than Republicans and Democrats alike. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, my opinion is I agree and, and you, you know, she has a 97% conservative approval rating, and somehow that isn't enough for uh, the Republican. Kind of a frightening thought. I mean, how do you get more than 97%? Uh, but, but let's talk about what you and uh, uh, Liz Cheney share rather than what makes you different. And, and what, what you share is an abiding respect for the Constitution. What you share is, is an understanding of the need to um, discuss issues. What you share is a respect to disagree. And both of you would work together well to carry forward what is within the principles of the United States. So let's focus on what you share. I agree with you. Um, I, I think she will be a survivor. Her competition is weak. But it's unfortunate that the other nine Republicans who have uh, voted for impeachment seem to be falling by the wayside uh, for uh, various reasons. And uh, people that are, are deemed to replace them in the primaries uh, are, are actually even more frightening. Yeah, th th that is sad. I tell you something I've, I've also told folks, I told folks beware because I know many progressives, some further left than I am, you know, that's not quite very easy. And some like you, a, 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 a very solid, uh, what I call a very solid moderate with values as, as well. I think uh, depending on what we see going down the road, they'll say, well, you know what? 
we don't agree with this woman, but this woman for real is a leader, has proven herself to be a leader, and who knows where she goes from here. Your thoughts on that? Um, I, I would say she's a leader, but first of all, you and I have this, I, I, you know, we, we've had many conversations, and you and I share uh, many of, of our desired outcomes, you know, whether it be healthcare, uh, 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 enforcement, uh, you know, uh, bring back the last Steagall Act, a whole list of things like where you and I agree on. Them. Uh, uh, but I always like to say that I'm a tactical progressive. Yes. Uh, I, I just want to uh, say, how's the best way to do it? How's the, what's the best way to craft the message? What are the steps we need to do to do it? Um, you know, uh, because I understand that half of this country uh, fears the extreme uh, presentation of the left, whether it's self-inflicted or whether it's done by uh, less credible media outlets, uh, people fear it. And so for that reason, I think it's important to say, uh, hey, what do we agree on? Now, I bet you and I could go to the, to the people involved with the uh, January 6th uh, insurrection, um, and we could go there and we could say, the banks are out of control. What do you think? And they go, yeah. You yes. know, and I could go there and say, you know, Facebook, there has to be some sort of accountability. We'll support posted on it. They go, yeah. You know, and I bet, you know, if, if we were to, to, to hash it out, we could probably come up with 10 or 20 things where we both go, and, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And so um, the fact doesn't get presented with uh, in, in this environment. So let's, um, this January 6th thing, let's figure out what's happened. We need to investigate it. It needs to see the sunlight so everybody knows. But uh, we need to tie this with um, the beauty of the Constitution rather than the ugliness of politics. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Well, look, this was an impromptu conversation that I after getting the text, I said, you know, um, you, you, you've always had good words on, you know, on all these issues. And I wanted to kind of pick your brain here on January 6th. And as usual, uh, you absolutely never disappoint. As what I always ask at the end of every conversation is, what would you have liked me to ask you that I didn't? Um, I, I, think, I think you've done well, Egberto. And, and as always, it's, uh, it, it's an honor. Uh, uh, to call you a friend and to be on your show and to participate in um, quality and meaningful discussions that you promote. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service and a skill that, that we all need. Brother Tim Danahy of the Tim Danahy Show, former director at Coffee Party USA, among other great things that he does. Thank you so kindly for having been on Politics Done Right. My pleasure. Thank you, Eduardo. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.